Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is the beginning of a new project. So uh, this is part one of our Swiftbow Mark I build uh, by Ravel in 172nd scale. And um, we're going to be starting off from the very beginning here. So uh, let's just jump down to the bench and get started on it. So I never really talk about cleaning uh, the parts before we get started. So I think maybe this is a good idea to do that now. I usually use just regular glass cleaner. This is the cheap stuff. And then a real soft brush, as you see here. This is the very one that I use uh, to kind of scrub and move the glass cleaner around all the parts. And this will get rid of any uh, release compound or any oils left over from the manufacturing process. And that's important in order for us to get a, uh, uh, a good build. So next up, we're going to take a look at our instructions. Now, all the instructions are going to uh, recommend <laughs> that you study your instructions before you begin. And what we're going to be looking at here is the Probably the best way, I think, to assemble um, our swift boat. And that's by building up the hull assembly with the deck. And then uh, there's a lot of interior parts and stuff. And as we think about uh, building this boat, um, there are a lot of large windows in it. So you're going to be able to see... Uh, uh, more inside this vessel than uh, in previous ones. So uh, like the front uh, part of the superstructure and, and all that, they, they want you to assemble these items, as you can see here, um, with the interior already in place. Now, as you start to think about it, um, when we go to do that, it's going to be really hard for us to paint the interior. So... I think the best thing to do is for us to assemble this model uh, in such a way that uh, we'll be able to paint the interior and then assemble it and paint the exterior. So I think the best thing to do is just go look at this painting diagram here, or schematic, <laughs> and we can kind of point out the different sections that we're going to build this up into for painting. For instance, we want the hull, I think, to be one piece with the deck and then the superstructure uh, to be separate where we can paint the interior on it and then uh, also probably the armament on top, uh, that tub. It's not a turret, it's a some sort of armored tub, but uh, the deck is oftentimes a different color than the hull and that's going to be true in this build as well so as you can see here uh, the deck and then the superstructure are different colors so it would just be easier if the superstructure itself was separate from the hull that way we can do this painting uh, separately so now that we have a plan uh, we need to take care of anything that happens to be wrong with the kit parts here uh, there are some uh, little sprue gates here where they were broken off at the factory and so we're gonna have to address those get that cleaned up uh, that way we don't have that horrible look right there some sanding down probably is about all we're gonna need there now a quick look at uh, the parts where we're gonna be putting together the superstructure parts the left and right sides the bottom side or the ceiling of the roof section. These all have uh, a lot of uh, ejector pin marks which we're going to have to take care of. What we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and separate all these parts. Uh, just going to start with the major items that we want to build up into sections so that we will have sub-assemblies that will be easier for us to, to paint up, especially since the interior of this kit has uh, quite a bit of viewable interior parts because the windows uh, on this particular model are quite large. So when it comes to cutting off our sprue gates, I do like to leave them long until I get the part free of the sprue and then we can get our sprue cutters in real close and just trim those off as close to the part as possible. And that leaves us very little to have to worry about sanding. When it comes to the superstructure parts here, 
it does incorporate a 45 degree uh, mating surface so we are going to have to pay a lot of close attention to those areas make sure that we sand those down and get them nice and clean and straight that way we won't have any problems with our parts going together so if the sprue gate remainders <laughs> that are on the part are uh, rather large uh, I usually start off with a 400 grit sanding stick and then I just finish it off with a 600 which is usually about all we're going to need uh, for a military vehicle especially if you're painting with acrylics and they're flat pla uh, flat paints uh, we don't have to worry uh, too much about little fine scratches on the polystyrene plastic because that'll just fill it in nicely we do have to pay attention also on the deck area all those little holes or locator holes for our railings seem to have just a little bit of flash sticking up on them so we're going to want to clean that off and any other sharp edges from the molding process we'll just polish those down I just want to be sure to follow the intended contour of the part uh, from when this uh, each piece was molded and sand off these uh, little sprue gates and any little flash that may be there because this kit does have minimal flash there is a little bit but we just want to make sure that everything's cleaned up and straight <laughs> we don't want to sand in any little divots or anything that might detract from the 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 lines uh, of of the parts themselves and we do have to be careful here on those mating surfaces so now we can start doing some of our test fitting and based on our experience with the p2 uh, pt109 uh, some of these parts probably aren't, aren't going to fit <laughs> as well as we would like for them to so we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of masking tape and secure the parts so that they're not falling out and off the uh, uh, the deck while we try to test fit all these items together we just want to make sure that everything is going to go together the way we want it to that way we can go ahead and make all the adjustments we need to and by using masking tape to secure the items we can get a pretty solid uh, construction going where we can do our test fitting and make sure that everything is going to be okay and right here we start to run into our first issue <laughs> many more to come uh, and the problem you can see right here uh, with the right side uh, in place it's being held off by this bulkhead here uh, it is uh, well it's just a little bit too big and it has a lot to do with the molding process so we're going to have to take this back apart and address that so that we can get that right side to lay in now if you can see with my fingernail towards the left here you can see how the part is uh, lower I guess from the, from the perspective of the way I'm holding it and then the back side towards the right kind of angles up I imagine that the original uh, intent is that this should be squared off and, and I believe that little bit of adjustment right there by sanding it down uh, to that inside edge and squaring this edge should take care of that problem that we have with the uh, right side of the superstructure wanting to stand off and the corner uh, not meet in the front so we're gonna go ahead and sand this down and then we'll we'll go ahead and put it all back together and test fit it again so we put this back together and since we're using mask ma masking tape uh, it's pretty easy to just kind of put these sides back in and we can check these corners again especially these front corners we need those to meet and to be level with one another so that we'll be able to get that glued together so I think that uh, we're in pretty good shape there so next up we will work on the rear section that also has a crew hatch or door um, and it fits pretty much perfect uh, no, no modifications needed which is a great relief and now the next thing we can do is we can test fit uh, the roof section 
and we want to make sure that we can get everything to snap right down into place and we want to check all of those uh, areas that uh, are contact areas where we're going to be gluing them together and the next thing is going to be the uh, this weapon station yeah that's what we, <laughs> that's what we'll call it the weapon station uh, it's going to need some work but I, I just want to make sure that the fit is correct on it and that it's going to fit correctly and it does uh, as a matter of fact it has a little bit too much play in it but we'll take care of that so now we can take everything apart and uh, remove all this tape that we have on it there for our mock-up and we're going to use perfect plastic putty to uh, address all of these ejector pin marks uh, that are sunken in uh, below the surface and there are quite a few are they going to be noticeable once our boat is completely assembled well that's I don't really know, but there's a possibility. So we're going to want to fill all of these uh, and just <laughs> set these pieces aside and let that dry. And uh, while that's drying, we can go ahead and take care of the next thing, which will be, uh, this is the back wall from the pilot house or the bridge <laughs> of our boat. Uh, you can see there's kind of an imprint there of a door raised surface there but uh, in reality uh, on a PT or not a PT but a uh, a swift boat uh, there I don't think there was ever really a door there as you can see here in this little snapshot I've got looking forward um, that was just an open access way uh, into the forward part of the boat but we don't have any detail in the forward part of the boat so I think uh, we'll go ahead and, and just measure this little rectangular section out. We're going to put a door there, and I know it's probably not historically correct, but since we don't have a forward section, you know, in the hull of this vessel, I think probably the best thing to do is uh, make us up a little door to go there. And we're going to get rid of that really, really ugly molding that's uh, uh, been done on the back of that bulkhead. And this is just thin polystyrene. You can just score it and, uh, and snap it off. And then you can just dress the edges really easy with a sanding stick. And I'm just checking the fit right here. If it covers up the original detail that was on there, which we are going to do away with. So the first thing to do is get our, uh, to me, a handy router here. And I've got a sanding drum on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and sand this down. Uh, I don't want to sand it completely down because we want to uh, dress this up later. Uh, if you're not careful with a sanding drum, you can uh, <laughs> you can do some do some serious damage. So we're just going to take off all these high points uh, and get rid of the majority of that extra bad molding area. And also, if we look at our steps. Uh, you can see where the molds came together to form that part, but I think it's a good idea to go ahead and straighten this out because uh, it, it probably won't be visible, you know, once it's completely assembled. However, it just makes me feel better and, uh, you know, it doesn't take long to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that. Now, once we get the major filing and grinding done, uh, we can start off with our 400 grit uh, sanding stick and... Uh, start to smooth and straighten uh, this back wall or bulkhead out and uh, then we can move to our 600 and uh, get rid of most of those other scratches and stuff and and get everything uh, polished down uh, as much as we need to also there is a little bit of flash of course uh, from a multi-piece mold here uh, around the steps I cleaned that up with the knife and now we can go ahead and position our door and just put a little bit of to me extra thin on it now I did put a little bitty handle on it and some uh, little bitty pieces of polystyrene to simulate the hinges it's gonna be kinda of dark inside here but at least we do have that detail 
uh, put back in. And it looks much better than, than uh, what Ravel had provided for us. So with our perfect plastic putty uh, all dry, I start off with um, a file to remove uh, large amounts of it. And then we come back in with a small sanding stick here and we'll just sand down all of these ejector pin uh, marks. And as you can see in the background with all those parts laying on the bench, there's quite a bit of sanding to do. And we're just going to make sure that everything is nice and flat and smooth. I think that the majority of them will, will be seen inside the pilot house uh, or the bridge of the craft. Now, on the very front of the superstructure, uh, in front of the windshields, as you can see here, this intake vent has an issue. Uh, I thought that it was probably uh, from handling or something like that, a ding or something uh, from the packaging process. But as we can see here on the front cover of our instruction manual, that, uh, that vent that you can see there on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the vehicle has the same defect. So <laughs> apparently Ravel really didn't care about that part. So we're going to go ahead and fix it. And this is um, sprue goo. So what we have is polystyrene sprues that have been dissolved into, to me, a cement. And we're just going to use that to build that back up on the top of that vent and um, put that into place. And once that completely cures and dries, we'll be able to sand and uh, shape that down so that it kind of is a mirror image of the one on the opposite side. Now, one of the, other than the fact that there's a lot of these uh, ejection pin marks, uh, it's really, really annoying when they're in a curved surface, uh, like uh, inside our weapon station here. <laughs> so uh, I'm mentioning that because that is probably the thing that is the hardest to take care of, is trying to sand an inside curve. That is so difficult, so it just takes time to do. Now we can go ahead and put this weapon station together and a little bit of to me extra thin and we're good to go. Now we are going to have to do some filling um, on the inside surface because it is a noticeable seam and the top of this thing is open so it's going to be visible so we're going to want to take care of it just like we did here. I didn't show me sanding it all out but there's quite a few areas that needed a, uh, a, little bit, a little bit of perfect plastic putty. And now we can go ahead and test fit and make sure that everything is going to be okay. As you can see, uh, that forward section of our weapon station is also uh, part of the roof section. So there are gaps there that we're going to have to take care of. Now before we can put our weapon station into place, there is a uh, kind of like a step that we need to install. Now this is deep down inside there. You're not going to be able to see much of it. And then we also have a center section that goes into the ceiling of our roof. So we're going to have to take and put that into place because we want all this together so that we can paint it. And here with those parts already glued into place, uh, there are there is some seams here, and you can actually see through them, <laughs> which I don't think is good. If it rains on you, you probably don't want that. Uh, so we're going to have to take care of that, take and fix that into place. And another concern that I have is that below the ring there that you can see inside it, uh, that right there, that ring, below that is the interior wall color which is a real light gray, and then above that is going to be the exterior uh, craft color. So um, I don't. I think we can get that done um, uh, with with it already assembled. So I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, and glue it to the roof. So next up is our 
uh, I guess the helm or the instrument cluster slash, I don't know, dashboard. <laughs> in order to check the fit on this thing, we're going to have to glue it into place. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, and as you can see, it's supposed to recess into uh, the left and right sides of our superstructure. And there is a small gap there. Uh, it's kind of no surprise that it doesn't really fit perfectly. Um, and it's also keyed on the opposite side, as you can see there. Uh, there are shelves um, that slot into the side there, the right side piece. So again, uh, we do have a little gap issue there and we really want these corners to meet up perfectly or as, as, as well as we can get them. So, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and disassemble this and, uh, take care of that. So like I always say, test fit, test fit, test fit. And believe you me, uh, especially when you're dealing with kits that are pretty much an unknown quantity, uh, you don't know exactly uh, the, I guess, the skill level of the people that either made the molds or designed the molds or a combination of both. <laughs> so in an ideal world, all this would fit together perfectly. But then again, I mean, we didn't pay, you know, $150 USD on this kit, so you're going to have to do some work. Um, and it's it's kind of sad because this is a a modern model. Uh, it first came out in 2021, so I would expect the fit to be a lot better than this, but then again, it is a Revell kit, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, but there is enough material, and we can make sure that all of our corners meet, so with that, we've started the mock-up, and we are going to just touch the Tamiya Extra Thin very lightly into the top corners here, as you can see. So we have the front section and then the left section of our superstructure. We want to make sure that they're nice and even across the top, and we'll do the same thing for the right side. Not using very much uh, cement at all at all. Uh, we just want to tack this together and uh, make sure that everything meets correctly. And I'm just going to hold it into place until it sets and, and takes hold. And we'll do the same thing with the back section, which fits very well. And now we can take a look at the roof section. And as you can see, uh, we got that large gap there, and there's uh, quite a few issues with... Uh, uh, those uh, previous cracks. Now we've got a really large uh, decal or decal, if you prefer, that goes over top of that section, and uh, we really need we, we don't need these big uh, gaps in there uh, to give us trouble with our with our decal. So we're gonna have to take and fill that front section there. And give it a little bit extra strength there because there's nothing there to hold it together. So as you can see here, uh, what I decided to do is use some sprue goo on it. And that's really good for filling gaps. And uh, after it uh, sets up really good, we'll be able to uh, dress that up and sand it down nicely. And that's going to hold everything uh, right in position where we need it. So I am um, going to take and clamp this down <clears throat> to the hull. So I have the hull underneath the deck and the superstructure on the deck and then the roof setting on top of the superstructure here. And we're going to clamp this together so that where we put that sprue goo, uh, it'll be uh, in the correct position and it will dry uh, because there is no tab or anything for it. And so we'll leave that overnight and then come back to the kit. And once that's completely dry, which I let it dry overnight, uh, we can take and remove our clamps and take those off. And now we can just take everything apart. Everything is fairly loose fit, I guess. Roof section is going to remain separate. And then we can take and remove our uh, superstructure, the, the walls themselves, which we have 
put together into one piece and now we'll take that floor section out uh, so these are the major items that we've got taken care of and now we can also take off uh, any of that masking tape that we've got holding things together because it is tacked together for us at the top corners and now we're going to come back in and cement the bottom corners just to make sure that <laughs> it's, it's not going to come apart on us and with that done and uh, the sprue goo has nice and cured for us here we can go ahead and kind of <laughs> reshape the roof here a little bit uh, need to sand this down and i start off with the 400 grit just to bring it down and it sands pretty much like uh, real soft polystyrene which is pretty much what it's made out of it's made out of uh, uh, dried uh, tamiya extra thin and polystyrene so it's a it makes a good filler and i've also went ahead and sanded down uh, that intake uh, vent there and now i'm just trimming up uh, the actual opening there or what there is of an opening and making sure that that's going to look the part I think it looks much better than the original condition of the kit part which had sinkholes also in the sides of them as you can see there next up uh, we do have interior parts and this is a sink and cabinet section and we'll just simply glue that together because we are going to paint this up now we will there is a radio that goes on top of it and also a sink faucet but we're going to leave those off for later now we need to take a look at our superstructure here the wall section the exterior uh, as you can see those corner sections there that rail that runs underneath uh, the windshield or the windscreens uh, and the windows there uh, they don't really made up <laughs> very well and we do need to polish down and trim up that corner as well and so we're just going to do that with a sanding stick and we'll just blend these in uh, luckily on the sides there they do stick proud and they stick out forward so that makes it really easy to take care of now the one on the opposite side needs just a little bit of adjustment uh, but it's very easily done we just blend it in uh, using our sanding sticks to do that and on the actual vessel, uh, it doesn't have this type of feature there. Um, what's actually on the real thing is a handrail. So if you wanted to actually build up a handrail uh, and go on it, you could just remove that whole rib that goes around the front there. Um, but I've decided to keep it, uh, the kit part there. Uh, even though we are doing some modifications to the kit, I just decided to leave that in place. Now the next thing that I believe is worth mentioning on this kit is that our superstructure, when you press it down into place, it kind of wants to pop back up just a little bit. And you can I hope you can see it there. Um, and the reason for that is because of the way these parts have been molded. And as you can see here, the lip that uh, our superstructure is going to sit down into has a rounded corner so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of uh, sand <laughs> I was going to say file but <laughs> we're obviously sanding here a uh, about a 45 degree angle here on the bottom outside edge and we're going to do that all the way around the superstructure to give a little bit of relief there uh, so that it will mate up and sit um, down inside that slot like it's supposed to. Uh, they didn't really, I guess, care <laughs> would be the, the word that I would uh, use, uh, that it, was, it would want to pop back up. And we don't want it to pop up. We want it to sit nice and firm down onto the deck. And so that little adjustment right there solves the problem, and it's not an issue. So we're going to go back to the roof section. Uh, you can see that those are large uh, uh, gaps there, and uh, we have gaps around the back. And I think I mentioned before that there's a really large star decal that goes on top of the roof section. 
So we don't want any deep cracks. So back to our friend here, the perfect plastic putty. I simply crammed it into the gaps there and let it dry. And now I'm just going to use a cotton bud or a Q-tip or an earbud, whichever you prefer. A little bit of water and we're just going to scrub over these areas to remove all the ex access, <laughs> excess. And then for those hard to reach areas, you can use a slightly moistened uh, toothpick or cocktail stick. I don't eat a lot of cocktails, so <laughs> I, I may have drank one or two. But anyway, I find that the, uh, the toothpick uh, is not so sharp that I'm digging out the uh, perfect plastic putty. It's, it's staying in place, and I can remove the excess out of the uh, areas where it doesn't need to be. Now all we got to do is clean up the opposite side. And then we're going to do another test fit, a final test fit. <laughs> so making sure that everything goes together. So we want the lower hull and deck to be separate from the walls of our superstructure and then our roof section to be separate as well so that we can take this apart, paint the interior, and get everything uh, mounted inside so that uh, we're not going to have any issues with the painting slash assembly. And uh, now that we've taken care of all those major fit issues, I don't really expect to see many more because we've got just about everything um, taken care of. So... That'll be it for part one of our Ravel Swift Boat Mark I build. Uh, special thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, I really appreciate uh, you guys watching. And if I earned your uh, subscription today, I'd appreciate it if you go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I love to hear from you guys. So leave me a comment in the comment section. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. You guys stay safe.